we have to change how we look at the world and the working world. People are like, well, you know what? This is the way it is. And this is the way it's always been. I can be strongly aligned with an ideology or a belief, but I can still disagree without disrespect. I just want people to treat others with more kindness and civility. The idea that this is not the way to build a workplace that can be sustainable is so outdated and dead. Right now we're in Los Angeles International Airport, LAX, gonna head over to Boston Logan, and then we're gonna have a keynote there at the Heinz Convention Center. After that, head to DC and have another keynote there in National Harbor, Maryland. So, busy week, but uh, this is what I love to do. What speech are you giving? What's the it's subject matter? Workplace civility, how we treat each other in the workplace. This is amazing. Yeah, we need like, more of that. Exactly. In a minute or so, I'm gonna head on stage and talk to 2,000 healthcare risk professionals about the importance of resilience during these tough times and how civility, how we treat each other, can get us there. For people who love to worry, this is a great time to be alive, isn't it? <laughs> I was so stressed out with this non-stop barrage of bad news. I told my wife, like, babe, just turn on the Oscars. That should be easy, <laughs> drama-free viewing. <laughs> so when I was thinking about this, the word Ubuntu came to me. Ubuntu, for those of you who are not familiar, is an African word that means I am because we are. How can we use Ubuntu and that togetherness to create more resilience and, dare I say, civility? It's not saying, follow me. It's saying, I will go first. I will lead with kindness. In this day and age, what more importantly can we talk about than kindness? And I loved him being brave enough to share some of the harsh things that he's been through. It was wonderful, very personal. Ah oh, man, I think yesterday was great. It was so fun just having a chance to connect to a large group of healthcare professionals. It was just a really fun event. Now we're heading to DC to hopefully do it again. <laughs> and I was talking to someone after who shared with me, she is in the same spot or was in the same spot that I was 15 plus years ago. It's hard for me to talk about because I think about how things could have ended very differently for me. When I was working in a really toxic work environment, I just was treated horribly in this place. And I was led to believe that I just didn't have any value. And I was like, if this is what the real world of work looks like, I don't, I don't wanna be here. And it hit me in that moment, like, oh my God, I'm never gonna be able to escape this. I'm gonna have to go the rest of my life fighting for my respect and that was <laughs> it's just it's just hard it's hard and i i just god sorry um i said i'm done i'm done i made a decision while driving to this very toxic job that i was going to take my own life and in that moment, that morning where I decided to, to, it was strange because I felt it as like a voice being like, just do it. What are you waiting for? There's no hope. And I took the wheel and I turned it sharply towards the guardrail on the freeway. I attempted to drive my car off the overpass in an attempt to make it look like an accident. For reasons that I'm not quite clear on, but super grateful for, the guardrail held. I came back into incoming traffic, and then I settled on the shoulder of the road, and I just thought to myself, what did I just do? What did I just do? I almost ended my life due to how I was being treated at work. 
I remember this, this exasperation of like, why isn't anyone doing something about this? I decided that I was going to just put my words out there. And at first it was just my wife and my brothers and my mom following me. And then before I knew it, there are thousands of people who are like, hey, I really am grateful that someone is talking about these issues. And I wrote my first book, Making Work Work, and then I followed up with Go Together. And at that point, I was like, all right, this message is starting to take off. People want to do this. I was getting on bigger stages and talking to larger groups of people internationally. And then Congress, um, so in this hearing, I would like to share a recommendation on how Congress can use civility to create more positive and a productive institution that truly serves the American people. It is my hope that every committee will consider beginning each new session of Congress with what I call civility. It gave me the understanding that one person can do way more than ever thought possible. Because the reality is this, you can make meaningful change from where you are with what you have today. Every movement in this world's history started with someone leading the way. My journey started as a suicidal person on the side of the road on a freeway in Los Angeles, realizing the importance of our shared humanity and the lack of it that I had in my life. If you want to change everything in your organizations, take that real intentionality to bring that shared humanity into the work that you do every single day. And not only will those questions change you, but your answers have an opportunity to heal the world. Ubuntu! There's so many things that I want people to understand through this work. What I do want them to lean into is the practicality of how this can actually improve the lives of others. My goal is that people can just live happy, peaceful lives where they're not dealing with the stresses of incivility and rudeness amongst their colleagues, their neighbors, their friends, and society at large.